Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's Friday, TGIF. I'm here, you see my pigeon-proof bird feeder. Well, it was pigeon-proof. And uh, today we got a couple things to do. You know, you remember that flag we got from Dean Collins that I love so much? I gotta tell you, I'm losing sleep over thinking somebody's gonna try and rip it off. That's the way I am. You know when you get something new, you think, and you know where I live, uh, nothing's safe. I gotta figure out a way to theft proof it. So we're gonna do that today and uh, we got a few other things to do. Let's get downstairs and start now, work. Basically my goal here is just to stop the average coward that's gonna run up from the street and grab your flag and run away. You know, that's all you wanna do. You know, cause uh, the more you try and secure this thing, it's, it's not gonna be able to do it. You know, they can always rip the flag off the pole, whatever, you know, but you just wanna get the, the, you know, the guy that comes up and he's just gonna grab it and run. So you wanna tether it somehow. I was looking at some, I drew up some plans. Let's check out what I was going through okay, my mind. first off, I thought maybe, you know, you can see here's the bad guy here. I said, maybe we can have a board with some punji sticks and when he pulls it up, it trips the left. I said, nah, that's too complicated. And plus, if the mailman should accidentally grab it, you know, I might be in trouble. Uh, secondly, I said, okay, here's something decent. You know, I have a, a, a light up there. Maybe I can run some nice 110 down here with some insulators right to the pole. And whoever grabs it will get a little zat. And that's ah, still, it's, you never know, you know, again with that damn mailman. Uh, I was getting a little crazy then thinking, I said, you know, I have an old revolver. I can, you know, uh, I can rig up here and then if they pull it out and then, uh, I said, yeah, this is getting a little bit dangerous but i said uh you know what maybe if i uh take one of my old surplus grenades here and put it around and this way they they pull the flag it pulls the pin and uh, i said i gotta come up okay, with okay so here's what i figured out i have some leftover 5 30 second chain from an old project we'll use some of that um i wanted to now you could easily drill a hole right through here but then you know you have that bolt sticking out both ends i would like this bolt to end inside here and still be secured now to do that what i have is uh i have this old piece of uh cut off piece of aluminum i'll uh, pull off this uh, plastic end cap that they put at the bottom of their pole and you can see this fits in here how nice is that huh so what i figured i'll do is i'll drill a hole through here one hole drill a throw a hole through here uh tap it and then uh cut this to approximate size and screw it in that way and that'll be uh, the affixion to the pole and then I'll just put a uh, an eye hook into somewhere in my house and use it. Now pad. we're over here at the drill press and what we want to do is put a hole right through here in the middle. Now what's important to remember is anytime you're using any tool, any power tool, drill press, anything like that, you do not, you want to take as much, uh, you want to keep it rigid. We always say that rigidity is, is the key and, and one of the keys is you don't want to have this that far down. Every time you lower this spindle down like this, you see how uh, how far I am every time you have this much of the spindle hanging out that could give you a lack of rigidity So what you want to do is you want that spindle to be as inside this cast iron housing up here You see you want it inside there So what we always do the first step is to raise your table up all the way up So that you're only coming down You know, let's say not even a half see just like that. That's where you want your, your drill to start just like enough there so that you have room but just like that, you don't want any extra uh, hangout from your spindle. Next up, we have our V-block under here. We're going to bring the spindle down here so that this comes, you want this to just be in the middle there. See, right in the middle? So that's how we'll know we'll be centered. And then you lock your table down, okay? So now we know that that V-block is exactly under the center. When we put this in here like this, we're going to get it right on top of the center. We're just drilling a pilot hole. Okay, I drilled a hole 3 16 of an inch, and the reason I do that, the, we're gonna, our final hole that we want is a number 7. And the reason I drill with a 3 16 first is because it's just below a number 7. I like to save my number 7 drill bit because this is the one that you drill for a quarter by 20 tap. And I don't want to wear this one out. I've had this for years, and I had it for years because I always drill the hole, pre-drill it first. So now, one thing you want to do is you set your drill. I have we, our drill is has a drill stop set so it doesn't touch the V-block. And we're going to put this down here, and we're going to drill right through. Again, it's centered up perfect. Now, what we want to do is flood this area with uh, aluminum. Uh, Alumitap, which is uh, an aluminum cutting fluid. You could use WD-40, but you don't want to gall up your bits if you don't use it. 
Now here we're putting this into the vise and when we do it, we want to make sure we put the drill bit in there, make sure it's straight up and down, not cocked either way, not left or right, straight up and down, and that will help us with our tap. We're going to tap right in there, quarter by 20, very easy, nice and tight. Take that out, flood it again with fluid. And now, we'll this is what's called a blind hole, which means the hole doesn't go all the way through. But we're still starting with our taper tap so that we get a, a good starting of the hole. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. So we're first going to do this here until the tap starts to bite. And again, this is aluminum. It's a very soft material, but I am only using two fingers on this tap handle as we draw it through. Again, I feel no binding whatsoever. And once I do, you can see the chip starting to come up here. Once I do feel a little bit of bind, I will do that to break the chip. But with aluminum, you really don't have that problem. Again, flood the area with, uh, with tapping fluid or cutting fluid, WD-40, anything to uh, save your, your taps. And uh, you can see how nice and easy aluminum taps. It's a real joy. But you got to be careful because you can strip it out very easy. So... Uh, now we're at the bottom of that blind hole. We'll spin this out and we're going to use a bottom tap. I'll show you what now, that is. Now this is one of the first tap sets I ever bought and I bought it new and it's a, it was a Hanson. You could say it says Hanson Whitney, but these are Hanson high speed, uh, it's HSS or high speed steel taps. And, uh, this is a set. And when I say a set, they come in a set of three and you have what's called a, a taper tap, which is what, uh, what you start it with. You have a plug tap, which is a secondary type, a second step, and then you have your bottom tap, and this will take it all the way to the bottom of the hole. And thread, you can see how the threads go all the way to the tip, whereas over here on these two, um, it, it starts, the threading starts a little bit up on the, uh, on the shaft. Now, it's important to remember that after you use your taps, always after you use it, because the tapping fluid will gunk up and everything on it, uh, always uh, hit it with a little WD-40 like this, a little WD-40 on there. Use a good a chip brush. You should always have one of these. And then wipe off any chips that you might have on the uh, on the tap and, uh, and then store it that way. And this way, you don't have to worry about it gunking up and keep your threads clean, keep your taps clean. You can have them for many years like these. Now, because this hole doesn't go all the way through, you wanna make sure you either take it out and tap it and get all the chips out of there. Then we're gonna flood it once again with fluid. And again, we're gonna make sure our tap has a lot of fluid. And we're gonna thread the tap in here by hand. You'll feel it start to, now it's threading in. And then we're gonna take that down to the bottom and that'll give us threads all the way to the bottom. Now, believe it or not, I did a video on how to open up an eye bolt. Uh, you know, you have to open this up to get the chain in. You want to do that before you put it onto the pole. So uh, using just a crowbar, just a crowbar, put it in your, your vise at an angle like this. Take the crowbar end like this, put it underneath, underneath the mouth of the eye bolt, pressing it down, and you could just get it open uh, big enough, and you could use this end too. You get it open big enough, to slip that uh, chain through and then you use the vise to close it so you can see that works really nicely it doesn't uh, screw up the eye bolt and then you'll close it all the way obviously if this was a high risk area you would put a spot weld or something to keep it closed but again they'll tear the flag off the pole you know, this is just a deterrent. Now, again, whenever you're going to use your vise as a clamping area, you don't want to use, the vices aren't really made as a press, but you can, this is a light duty application. But uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure you put it right in the center, you know, so the jaws aren't cocked. And then you'll bring this down like this. Always make sure your, your threads are geared, but you see how easy that is to close it up. Give it a good closure. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Calling this project done. You can see how nicely this came out. You see here? Now, this is a visual deterrent. You can see the lock here, and it's also, and they can't twist this off because the chain won't twist, being it's an elongated chain, and it's just a, a way to display some of my maybe antique locks and whatnot, but it's done. I like it. Now I could sleep at night. Okay, next up, I uh, just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, with all the morons we have in the news pulling statues down and whatnot. Um, I want to talk about one statue that we have in my town, the only one non-religious statue that we have in, in College Point where I live. And um, it was uh, of Conrad Poppenhusen, and this guy was an amazing guy. And he uh, came here at 25 years old from Hamburg, Germany, started a whale bone processing plant in Brooklyn. 
uh, when he was uh, after establishing his business, he was looking around the land and he found College Point to be a nice place. It was actually two smaller towns. And uh, he came over here and he opened up a uh, a new business and he got a license from Charles Goodyear, you know, from Goodyear Rubber. And he started making hard rubber products and, and it took off, you know, it was uh, it was brand new. And uh, what he did is he built all kinds of housing for his workers around the area. He uh, built a uh, an institute, which is a big thing. Poppin used an institute still there. It had the first free kindergarten in the United States. Uh, he did all that for his workers. He was uh, an amazing guy. And uh, he also built a church, you know, uh, for... And this is what small towns were great, you know, back then, before we got, you know, uh, just totally crowded. And, and so... Um, when he was uh, uh, later on in age and he passed away, they they wanted to build a uh, statue to uh, to appreciate him, and uh, so they uh, they commissioned this statue and uh, chipped in. It, it cost them eighteen hundred dollars back in eighteen eighty four to make this bronze statue. Now that's equivalent to forty seven thousand dollars today in today's money. But they chipped in, they got the statue, and they put it up. Uh, I thought this is pretty interesting because here's the uh, obviously the monument today. And uh, here's a an old postcard I have of the monument back in the uh, late 1800s, possibly early 1900s. You can see the horse and carriage on the right-hand side. Really cool. Uh, this statue, this uh, monument, <clears throat> means a lot to us. You know, anybody that that enjoys history, and especially the guy that founded this town and did so much for this town, and so much for all the people around there. He got the railroad and the ferry to come to this town, to, so and it exploded, you know, because there was work here and... And uh, that's the guys. Those are the heroes, you know, not the people ripping these things down. The people that if, if somebody years ago built a statue for you, there was a reason for it. They didn't do it for so any closing. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you have a great weekend now. Take care. Bye bye.